Welcome back, everybody. This week on the Ink Tool, we're taking a look at a little bit of a classic. This is Parker Quink Blue. Well, Blue Black. Either way, this is an ink that's been in the making since 1931. Before we talk about the color, let's talk about the bottle. This ink comes in a nice glass 2-ounce bottle, or 57 milliliter, and it's a deep, wide-necked bottle, so filling any pen really isn't going to be an issue here. I also like the unassuming vintage look of the bottle. It screams functional and classy at the same time. My only gripe here, and it's kind of a pedantic one, is that the adhesive used on the label isn't completely sticking, so this corner is coming up. Aside from that, though, this is a good-looking bottle. Also, this ink comes in at around the $10 mark, so let's see how the writing and water samples look to see where it's going to stack up against our other budget-friendly inks. We're going to do things a little differently this week and start with the shading. This way we can get a good look at the extremes we might expect during the writing sample. Right off, I like the mid-tones that we're getting in this blue, blue-black ink. Well, I should say that the mid-tones really kind of make up the whole light portion of the drip. Although we do get a little lighter on the one-pass swab. The darker tones we get right before the sheen threshold are nice and navy, fading into a midnight blue. And then we get this sheen. This is a good look on the sheen. Depending on the angle, you either end up with a deep black or a very subtle red. Now, the website claims this as a fast-drying ink. I could say that this is partially true. The nib on the vanishing point is super wet, so it's putting a lot of pressure on the ink to try to make that quick dry time. Even so, out of the broad nib, we still managed a respectable 20 to 25 second dry time. I think in a medium or fine nib, we could have potentially seen a dry time closer to 10 seconds. I like how the ink is coming out of the nib. It definitely feels like Parker has a good balance of lubrication and dry time here. I'm not having any flow issues. And for the most part, the ink is dry before I move on to the next line. We are also getting a good range of shading here from that light denim look to the more intense blue-black. I'm really liking that property of this ink. We even do get a slight bit of sheen here as well for a good all-around look. So let's go ahead and bring on the water. Here's the Rhodia dot pad with our pre-written water sample. And for something a little new, let's add a fresh line of ink at the bottom to see what happens. All right, here we go. Okay, overall this isn't a bad result. On the parts that had time to dry, we got a decent performance. I mean, the ink definitely feathered, but we've seen worse. Now, as for the fresh ink, I was kind of expecting it not to hold up here, but even the fresh ink did a really good job. 
So this is an ink that you know that you can take it with you, and if accidents happen, you'll still be able to recover your work. All right, so final thoughts. For an ink with the Parker pedigree, I think we have a good ink. On the pros, we have a good price-to-volume ratio, a good shading profile from light to dark out of the nib, it gives us a subtle sheen, and the dry time is very respectable in a broad nib. The only real con here, and honestly, I still think it's kind of a pro, is the water resistance. The only way it's really a con is if you go into this ink hoping for a water-resistant blue-black. If you're more realistic with it, though, honestly, I'd say that the water resistance we saw here is still a pro. If you want to try to get a con, I guess you could go with the sticker, but even that seems kind of overkill. It was just an adhesive coming out of the factory. So, overall, I think this is a good classic and definitely one to add to the cart if you need a blue ink or you're just kind of looking for another workplace or around the home ink that you can trust to, you know, hold up to the occasional accident or two. So that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you for watching, and if you want to support the channel, the two best ways to do that are to use the Pen Chalet discount code below, or to support the channel over at Patreon. The second one definitely has the added benefit of providing extra dog treats for my girls. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out the links below. And if you're in the podcasts, check out Two Guys Zero Planners. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.